Hey, thank you for watching another edition of Joe's Record Store. I know I've been out of the loop for a while. And uh, it's just that I had this new work schedule. And it's like if I'm not sleeping, I'm working. And then I come home, play with the internet. I'm just too exhausted. And then by the time I get up, and I work a later shift. Which, you know, it's ideal because I can sleep in more. But on the other hand, it's like most of my day's gone. i got to go to work. But, uh, well, I still have some time to squeeze in. These are two uh, white metal treasures that I've uh, got in the collection. Oh, by the way, the music you hear in the hurricane is... Uh, excuse me. The music you hear in the background is Hurricane, the third album, Slave to the Thrill, which I'll talk about later. But uh, my main focus here is the uh, two white metal classics, which I cost me a good chunk of cash, but... Uh, I'm glad to finally have these in the collection if I wanted literally for years. And uh, of course, one of my specialties, Baron Cross. They're one of, aside from Striper, one of the first batch of bands that really got me into the wonderful world of white metal. Axeman, and uh, this is their Believe EP. Very simple layout. I'm not pulling the record out. It's just no frills, black vinyl. It was a you know independent. This came out before their uh, their debut album, Rock for the King. It's a six-song EP. So, uh, you know, if I gave it a spin, there's the original mixes. I'm hoping maybe I can hunt down the, the cassette version of it, too. But, uh, you go, you know, three songs per side. All the songs, it's just, it's the original mixes of, the, you know, the same songs that ended up on the debut album. Believe, He Loves You. If you're familiar with Baron Cross, these are songs that you know you've already heard you, you know the words to them I can get kind of emotional now when I, I hear a Baron Cross record and while I'm at it oh let me speaking of Baron Cross I was I meant to pull something out just hold it right there Check that out. Uh, these are records. I bought them in the win in the fall of 2012, actually, and um, I got them specifically for framing them. Had the cassettes for years. At the time, um, I got them on CD for the first time ever back in 2012 when I bought these, and I brought them down to Panama. And I took him to my uncle who does woodwork for a living, and uh, and he made the frame for these. Uh, I don't think he was really familiar with framing record co album covers because, really, you know, there's supposed to be a space between the, you know, the the, the album cover and then a, you know at least like that much space between, you know, the frame end. But you know, it still looks nice. I'm looking forward to when I have a proper home and. You know, could put these on the wall. This is uh, Rock for the King. No, excuse me, Atomic Arena, which Rock for the King is still having storage, also custom frame. So um, I'm still so so looking forward to getting my property down here. I'm going to do some awesome layouts. Is Baron Cross Atomic Arena? It was like glam slash power metal slash traditional heavy metal. Baron Cross, this is a good heavy album for 1988, 89. 
and uh, that was a newly converted metal head and this one I've been wanting for ages this is now I literally have all the vinyl records of Baron Cross and band made a big impression on me when I was a kid and let me explain how I got into white metal well let's say sometime in the late 80s you know middle school going into high school or ninth grade it was not very happy time for me I had a lot of issues and of course at this time you know rock stars were magical wonderful people to me you know heavy metal musicians hard rock musicians you know they you know I thought you know that was just that rock music was the answer to all of life's pro hard rock heavy metal you know punk and you know abrasive music this is the this is the life you know coming along in junior high school and then I stumbled upon a band called Striper and the video free you know to make a long story short I didn't even know what they were about at the time you know and I just loved the melodic leads the har vocal harmonies powerful you know sound behind that I just wanted their record and I was made fun like um, aren't you don't you think they're too religious like what are you talking about they sing about Jesus and um, a friend of mine I begged him to let me borrow his soldiers under command tape I loved it eventually bought my own you know and, and down the road you know I've been acquiring striper stuff which a lot of you know and um, blood good was the second one and uh Ironically, the uh, the friend that I borrowed, my skater friend at the time in junior high, thought religion was stupid, but let me borrow this Christian metal band that his re his Christian cousin gave him. I mean, I was just mesmerized. I mean, my, and my, and I didn't, and my reaction at the time was like, I didn't get the urge to suddenly run to the nearest church. My attitude was, well, you know, a lot of metal bands have been doing the Satan thing for us. I guess it's about time someone did something different. Oh, well, I mean, I had a pretty positive attitude. And, um, and then, you know, a year later, I came back to the States. You know, again, you know, it was not a happy time. I was just starting high school. You know, I couldn't wait to get, I just couldn't wait to go home and hide in my room and just you know play my music because that was what my you know life revolved around you know metal music getting that new tape or that new record and um, of course you know one of the bands you know during that golden age of Christian metal or excuse me labels was pure metal records which I'm going to I obviously I got a tripod and I should have used it, but oh well. And this is Axman Pure Metal Records. This is still sealed. I'm not going to open it. Uh, but the label is just a, you know, no frills black vinyl with a pure metal label. I got the CD so I didn't have to play the record Pure Metal. You know, basically, you know, the who's who of Christian metal back in the day. Rec and it, 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 it features the names of the... This one features the names of the uh, guitarists of the band, and then in parentheses, you know, the band they play in, Rex Carroll, White Cross, Troy Thompson, Bride, D. Harrington, Marie Adams, Light Force, Steve Rose old band, and this is from 88, let me flip it over so you can actually see better, like I said, I really don't plan to play this, actually, I paid over a hundred bucks for it, but I'm, I don't regret it. It's a treasure for me. You know, another piece of white metal history for the archives. Rex Carroll, D. Harrington, Jer Saints, Force 3. That was kind of a cheesy band, but I have their cassette. Wolf Christians in Jerusalem. And th that band goes back to the 70s, actually. Tony Rossi, Daniel Band. So it's one of the earlier, like, guitar rock bands in the 80s before, you know, Christian metal 
as we knew it came into existence. Rosanna's Raiders, you know, pioneer band from Australia. Scarlet Red, that's a band that came and went, female singer. Novella, another, you know, two album wonder. Bjorn Stigson of Leviticus. So even though it's, I consider it more like a mix of hard rock and heavy metal, and some is just rock, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, this is one of the, uh, you know, stepping stones as far as the history of Christian metal, and, you know, pure metal, even though I kind of joke on pure metal records a lot, um, I mean, as far as the history of white metal, the genre of, you know, white metal, aka Christian metal, you know, they, they've done a great job at the time, at least, you know, propelling the genre and, you know, giving people that, you know, wanted a positive alternative to the, um, you know, negative lifestyles and influences of the world. It, you know, so is my mindset. I didn't want to be tainted by that. <coughs> <coughs> Horrible secular world when I was a new convert, so... You know, even though the production was, you know, a lot to desire, and I still had these good rockin' tunes, you know, they were, a, you know, a, a positive inspiration when I needed it, and I don't, uh, okay, and that's it for Joe's Record Store.